talk about uh, a game that I've just made. It's um, it's a game. It's called the Game of Forty Nine, and um, I've been messing about with it for quite a while. And uh, I put it in a little box, and I've made all the little pieces and everything. But uh, I'm really going to explain the game as, uh, as well as I, I can. Um, it's a game by uh, Mark Causey, I think that's his name, Mark Causey, yeah. And I'll just uh, take the bits and pieces out of the box to begin with. Empty the contents, as I say. I've got the instructions there, but I'm going to go through the instructions for you. Or the rules. So that's that's the box. And I made a little board. I put it in half to, to reduce the size of the. I keep I kept making uh, great big things because I, I didn't know really how to make the boards, but now I do. And uh, the thing that I've forgotten to do is to um, put a cover on this board. I haven't. Um, I was thinking about putting Mod Podge on, letting it go hard, and then put in. Uh, a matte varnish on so as it would protect it because this is only a bubble jet this is only a bubble jet uh, print print out and uh, to introduce you to it, it, it it's called the game of 49 and there are 49 squares on the board a 7 by 7 7 7 is 49 and uh, it, it runs in a snake like uh, thing um, like a labyrinth it goes from 1 to 7 7 to 13 13 to 19 and then up to 24 and then it starts a, a further track and the outside track here the, the one I've just the, the outer square I've just gone through is, is blue the next one is is uh, red or orange I call it red and orange so if, you, if I say red or orange I mean I mean this square 25 to 40 and then the, it goes from 41 to 48 and then the final square in the middle is is um, the game square number 49 and uh, there's no special significance about this, the way that the board goes like that it's just that I like to know everything about a game before I even start it and um, it's played by cards you play it by cards and the idea is that you put um, the idea of the game is, it, is to a few of these these are what they call bingo bingo counters and uh, they're handy I like these because you can see through them especially when you're working with numbers you, I don't know if you can see it there but you can actually see through onto the onto the square underneath and at the moment I've only got three colors I've got uh, green and blue and red and I've got yellow coming, but they're coming from China. They're, they're only cheap things, and they cost, they cost about one fifty for about a hundred, I think, or something like that. Very, very cheap. So once you get a set of these, you can make about two or three games if you want, or whatever you feel like. And uh, I'm going to take a few of these counters out, and these are the counters that mark the board to, to show you on the board where where whereabouts you are. And uh, the idea of the game is to get these counters, your counters whatever colour you are, you select it by choice. In that arrangement, so if there's two players playing, you'll get four of, four of it in a row like that. Or they can be in a row like so, diagonally. Or they can be this way. But they must be adjacent to each other in any what they call them. So that, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get your four of four of your counters in a straight line either vertical horizontally or diagonally before your your counterpart is before the person you're playing against does it and that, that's the idea of the game and how you do that I'm going to show you now if you play a three or four player game um, it only takes three tiles or three counters to um, to get into that position it makes it a quicker game that's all 
I think it might go on a bit long. And what you do is you get 48 of these numbered cards from one, which the cards are numbered, uh, from one to 48. And uh, there's another dozen cards which are what they call wild cards, which are these. I hope I'm not going out a shot. I don't know if I've gone out a shot. And what you do is you get the two sets of cards and you mix them together and uh, you, you then you've got 60 cards then. So that'll be 1 to 48, numbers 1 to 48 on these cards, like so. And these cards are special cards because they're called wild cards. And you've got five uh, 49 cards, what I call 49 cards, with a single square in the middle of them. These are payoff and they're wild cards. Uh, they have two, two functions. Uh, the next one is the next circle up, which is the green circle. And you get two of those, two of these, like so. I've made these, they're not, they're not very, they don't move around very well, they're a bit uh, they're a bit dry, so uh, but they're not for playing. You don't play actually play on them. You just use them as a as a you pick them up and then turn them over. So there's five red ones, single ones, and there's five from 41 to 48, uh, two from 40, uh, 41 to 48, and there's two from 25 to 40 with orange or what you want to call it red. It looks like orangey to me anyway, and. Um, and there's three of the 1 to 24 tiles. And these these tiles actually correspond with the outer circle of the of this. So that is the blue one. And this runs from 1 to 24. So you can see that I was explaining the board. It goes from 1 to 24 and then stops. So that's a complete. So when you pick this card up, you place a, a marker to denote which tile you want. I'll go into that in a minute. Uh, the next card is this this one here, or this one here, it denotes on there. And the next one is for the this one inside here, which is the green one. And obviously the last one is for this one. And the way you play the game is that you shuffle all the cards up. You shuffle all the cards up, da 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 da, and uh, that's my shuffling over. <laughs> and what you do is, the person that goes first, or, or is selected to go first, or you choose, or you pick to go first, picks up the card, and what he does, he then puts the the marker on the number that's designated on the card. So if you look along, you'll see this is number 48, which is next to 49. You put the counter on to show that that, that one is up for auction. This is the auction side of the game. And what happened is that you would bid for this normally. This is a bidding side of it. You would actually bid for this. But um, we're not really interested in bidding as, as part of, like I'll give you two for it and I'll somebody says I'll give you three and I'll go up to five and so we don't we don't like that we like to let that to be taken out of our hands so what I did was I produced these four little um, dice which are quite cheap to purchase you can, you can get a hundred of these for a two or three pound and uh, I've got four colours for four players. It, it, it says it does say five players, but um, I, we don't have many more than about four people. And at the moment, I haven't got the yellow counter, so I'm going to discount that one. And in any case, I'm only going to play with the two, two. So I'm going to, I'm just going to use two of the dice to show you what what goes on. So I'll use the two, the red and the blue dice. And um, these are couple of pencils which I've introduced into the game so you can mark off the thing and this is my own little 
sort of invention, not an invention really, and it's quite easy to make. You can either draw it on a piece of paper or you can just write on a piece of paper with a bit of pencil. And you'll see that, um, I just got, I should have got these out really. So I was just saying, any other time you could open this with ease. Yeah, I'll just take one of these because I'll take one. I've got my pen here. So each player would get one of these on the auction. And you'll see on it, it's got, you could write it in pencil, it would be the same, red, blue, green and yellow. And it's got throw one, throw two, throw three, and then the total. And this is for each player. Uh, whoever's playing. Well, we've only got red and blue playing at the moment. I'm just showing you red and blue for simplicity. And what happens is that each one of the players that are playing or bidding uh, would be, you don't have to bid if you don't want to. It's something you don't have to do. You, don't, you might not have any money at varying stages. But you start the game with $49. And uh, this is the money I've produced. The money in the actual game is a little bit different to this. It is dollars, so I will say dollars for... I've made these into... These are euros, in fact. And uh, I've cut um, one euro, five euros, ten euros, and twenty, and twenty euros. I haven't made the money up properly yet because I, I don't even know um, how much how much money you should have in the bank, how much money there is in the bank. It doesn't say how many how many uh, banknotes there actually are. So I'm, I've got to work through to find out how many there can be and work a couple of games in so I can find out how much how many pounds or how many euros I want in ones, fives, tens, and twenties. Anyway, so the first player has picked up a card from the top. And luckily, this one is a, a, 40, a number 48. And um, he'll take out his little board and each will throw the dice. So I'm going to throw them together, but each player would throw his own dice. And you score it by blue gets two. Scores two. And red scores three. And you'll do this three times. Red scores five, blue scores three, red scores six, and blue scores four. And what you do with that then is, you'd score up and that's 14. And uh, that's nine, isn't it? Yeah. So that was the score for the total. The total score. It's very simple. This kids, kids love this. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm a bit of a kid, so I love it. And if your maths are not too good, uh, you need to, you need a bit of paper to work it all out on. Anyway, uh, these are quite cheap to make, or you can put, put it on a piece of paper on a pad or something like that. You don't need all this super duper thing. But I've got the equipment, so I'm, I'm going to do it. And. Um, so Red has won that one. So Red will take off the auction. He's won the auction. And he puts on one of his counters on number 48. And uh, what happens now is that the game continues. Uh, the next card will be turned over and so on. Until, until you've got several things on the board between each of them. Like so, it, it, it will start to end up something like this. And uh, the other thing is that mixed in with that, I did say there was 
some wild cards. So the next the next card turned over. Look at well, not luckily, but it turns out it's it's an orange card or a red card which pertains to this actual square. And this is a bit that might confuse you a little bit. So these are called wild cards, and there are twelve of them. And the denominations I've got, you've got three blue ones, two greens, two orange, and five red. So that's your twelve. And uh, you do this in two phases. The first phase is that whoever's picked up this card, whoever's gone, the, the chap after who picked up the 48 would, would be the next chap to go on the left. So the game would continue to the left. And um, the next chap up would have picked this one up and it would have gone to him. And he puts the counter anywhere on one of those squares numbered 25 to 40. So he looks along there and he goes 25 to 40, but he cannot place it, the marker on one space that's already occupied. He cannot put it on 37 or 38 or 25 or 26 or 34 or 31 because they're, they're occupied. So he's got to put it on a square of his choice. And I'm going to say that he's blue. So he's going to put it, he, he put it on a square that he fancied. So he may well want to put it uh, there. Because he might be after one going this way. Don't forget they can go diagonally. So he, if he can win this on auction, he will. Um, he only needs one in the middle, and the, the ones in the middle come up quite frequently. The, that, that, the, this has got a, a special function in the centre square, which I'll go into in a moment. Anyway, so you will then auction the way that we did this one. So you take another one of these little cards, and you will auction the same way by rolling the dice three times, and the winner will take the thing and we'll say for instance that blue actually wins this and he will put his counter on and that is that part of the sequence done so blue won that round uh, by going through uh, throwing the dice three times etc which is something we went on earlier I want to, don't want to keep going running over it and over it again and uh, you, you know how we got to put it on uh, oh, I've gone wrong there somewhere oh I've done it wrong I've done it wrong sorry I did it wrong I put it on the wrong one that's a cock up it's a cock up okay well the the um the number selected by blue was number 28. I cocked up on the last one because I put it onto the wrong wrong square. I'm trying to think of too many things at once. So he's put it on 28, which is okay because it's one of the squares allowed on this card. Uh, then he does the auction, which I've already explained. And once the auction's completed, we'll say, for instance, that uh, um, red has won the, the the auction and he puts his counter on there and the auction piece goes to one side. So that's part one of the wild cards function. Now the second part of the wild cards function is that there's a payout on these. On these 12 cards, any of these 12 cards, there is a payout. And when you get a payout, it means that each person with a chip on the board gets seven euros. Doesn't matter who he is, he will get seven euros. It doesn't matter where he is, he will get seven euros. So blue will get one, two, three, four. He's got four. So four sevens are 28. He will get 28 euros. And red will get one, two, three, four, five. Well, five sevens are 35. He will get 35 euros from the bank here. And uh, up to a maximum of 49. You can't get any more than 49. If you have, you've got 15 counters each but if you had 15 couches on the board you would only get paid out on on uh, seven of them you only get paid on seven because seven sevens are 49 I hope that's clear so there's two phases for each, for each one of these payout cards the first one is you do the auction you pick the square that you want to go on which is uh, on the one of those only one of those marks on the board and not one that's already occupied you cannot bump on these they stay on once they're placed they stay on forever and uh, once that auction's completed, you then go on to the payoff where you pay everybody out. 
and then you carry on as normal then then, then there's the next go uh, there's only one other card and one other thing that each player who pulls one of these cards he will keep that card in front of him so if the next player pulls out he's going to get 47 so he would keep 47 so somebody would have 37 25 26 28 so did they, they'd have one for each one if the board is this is in case the board is knocked if the board is knocked it will move all the things and you won't remember where it is it's in like chess where you're remembering every square and um, you'll know that with the cards you've got you can put them back on 48 49 12 11 10 1 and so on with each player so you can replace the bits on the board that's why you keep this book piece in front of you and um you turn your money upside down so people can't see how much money you've got and uh, these cards will be played in the same way so these wild cards play exact so that's number 41 to 48 on this inner green circle here and any number on there you could place it the player drawing this card would place his on any unmarked number and then you would do the normal um, auction for to receive it there's only one thing in the wild card this is, this is the one oddity um, if you draw a while somebody draws a wild card on his turn what happens is that you all play for this one in the middle or whoever wants to play for the one in the middle and you roll the dice and we'll say for instance in this case that blue wins this one Um, if so the auction's over blues won it and then you, you do the same thing on the payout now then if because there are five of these it's possible to get another one so on this guy's next draw or several draws further down he could pull this out and go oh I've got a wild card and it's a 49er so you could put this on top of there again doesn't matter because this one can be bumped and uh, what you do, you, you, you do the normal auction with the little scoreboard, this one. And um, the winner, whoever he is, in this case, we'll say it's a blue one again. We'll say, for instance, it, blue wins this one. Blue doesn't remove that what he does he can place this another tile for, for winning the auction this is where the special arrangement comes for this I wonder what the special bit was for this one he can place this blue tile a new blue tile on any square on any unmarked part of the board so he can put it anywhere he wants to put it and uh, I'll put it there ready to go into or go up that way or possibly go this way so there's further chances because I can put one here and there's a chance to go there so you've got to be watching that you want four in a row horizontally vertical or diagonally any time any any chance of doing that and then you would pay out again so the one two three four five six six sevens that's 42 for blue 42 euro and red would get one two three four five sevens of 35 euros and that's all there is to it if there's already one as I said if there's already one existing on there and it's the same color all that would happen would that it, it would go to any square on the board which is which is a, a, a good thing it's an asset so getting the 49 squares are a good thing um, the only thing that I've changed in my particular game I've, I've changed the auction which is, is this thing with the colored dice so I've introduced dice um, that's the only thing that's different uh, the ordinary auction would be where you'd, each player would bid for whatever it was and the one that placed highest bid would be the would be the uh, would be the winner um, there is a little thing that um, if you bid for something this is why you do these wild cards in two two separate items you do the wild card you do the bid in and then the next part of the thing is you pay out on the auction um, if you if you bid for something and you haven't got the money um, you will pay five euros for uh, not complying not having the money so you pay five euros 
you would have probably have five euros at least to pay the bank uh, as a forfeit. If you haven't got five euros at all, or you haven't got any money at all, you would lose a chip off the board. So anything less than five euros in your hand uh, would, would mean that you'd lose a chip any, from anywhere on the board of your choice. And uh, that's, that's, I think that's all there is to it. There's nothing, it's not too technical again. I've done the rules and uh, these rules were the, as I say, with the dice are, are my rules. Uh, extra little things to save the bidding, but I think it makes the game a little bit more exciting. And uh, the, game, the aim of the game is obviously to get four uh, in a row, vertically, diagonally or horizontally. That's the then one. It's nothing to do with the money, it's to do with the how many you've got on here. And there are some rules whereby the more tiles you've got, if you're anything above seven, you get reduced payouts. Uh, that's in the game rules if you want to play that. Um, that's entirely up to you. But, um, yeah, I, and I'm adding a few bits and pieces to the games. I, I, I haven't... Uh, yeah, that I haven't thinged. And uh, the maximum uh, you can pay off for a, for an aux in the auction is three sixes. So if you when you roll three times, if you have to roll three sixes, you get eighteen. So the maximum you can pay is eighteen dollars for any 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 what they call them. So you'll know immediately if you have got eighteen dollars by looking. But try and keep your money hidden from other people. You don't want to know them to know how much you've got. Anyway, that's it. And uh, I hope that's been some use to somebody and it's uh, been some value. And uh, I haven't. Um, Spoilt, <laughs> spoilt the game for anybody, but I, I haven't bought this game. I'm, I, I might even buy it um, because this is a bit. I just like making games. It's, it's something I like doing. It's, I don't make them. It costs me more to make than it would to buy. Actually, more, more times out of ten. If I make another one, it probably would be a bit cheaper. And the more you make, the cheaper they get. But I'm only going to make one because I don't know many people, and we, it's only the family that plays with these. In any case. If they, if they fancy them, and if they don't fancy them, they just get discarded. Anyway, I'll stop there and uh, wish you good luck with. Okay.